This video is a quick overview of the simple pendulum. So the first thing I want to look at is the period of the pendulum. And this comes from solving a differential equation to get an equation of motion for the pendulum bob. And I'm going to do that in a different video. For now, I'm just stating the result. T equals 2 pi root L over G. Now this is based on an assumption that was used to solve that differential equation that the amplitude is not too large. So in this problem, you'll notice I'm sticking with an angle of 15 degrees. That's pretty safe to not cause too big of an error with this period formula. Some special things to note about the period of a simple pendulum. It's independent of mass, and it's also independent of the amplitude. The amplitude would be measured as the maximum value of theta there. Again, that's only true as long as the amplitude stays relatively small. If you go to enormous angles like 45 degrees or 60 degrees, then you'll start to see deviations from this simple behavior. The second point I want to make in this video is about energy issues. What's going on in terms of energy with a simple pendulum is that at this maximum angular displacement, all your energy is gravitational potential. And then it transforms into kinetic where it's purely kinetic by the time I get to the maximum speed at the bottom of the trajectory of this thing. So what I want to figure out in particular is how do I compute the maximum speed based on the length of the pendulum and the amplitude. So it just takes a little bit of trig. I got a horizontal line in there to build a right triangle and I noticed that this side is the adjacent side so that's L cosine theta. I'm going to put the zero of my y coordinates at the lowest point for the problem. And then I can measure the height where the pendulum was initially at rest. And because the string still has a length of L when it's pointed straight down, that height is just going to be L minus L cosine theta. Now I can write down our statement of energy conservation. In the initial position, all the energy was gravitational potential, but my height was L minus L cosine theta. In the final position where I have maximum speed at the bottom of the trajectory, there is no gravitational potential. I have one half mv max squared. So you'll notice the mass is not relevant to the maximum speed here. I multiply by two and square root both sides. And I'm going to go ahead and factor an L out of those parentheses at the same time. So I have two G L times the quantity 1 minus cosine theta. All of that square rooted gives me the maximum speed. OK, let's apply these ideas to a simple example. So I have a simple pendulum in a grandfather clock that has a period of two seconds. That's actually the way a full-size grandfather clock is constructed. And I have the amplitude of the oscillation is 15 degrees. So part A, compute the length of the pendulum. Well, this is just a way of turning around the period formula. I'm going to divide by 2 pi on both sides and then square the result. That gives me L over G. And then I can solve for L. And it's G times the quantity T over 2 pi all squared. And assuming that we're on Earth, that G is 9.8 meters per second squared. The T was 2 seconds. And I get 0 0.993 meters. In part B, I want the maximum speed. So I've already solved this problem in general and got a little formula for that. So I get square root 2 times 9.8 times my length, 0.993. 1 minus cosine of theta, where theta is my angular amplitude. And when I crunch the numbers, I get 0.814 meters per second. If you find the physics content on Zach's Lab helpful, click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.